Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Kevin and today Goose, Jillian and I are at Mitchell's Landing down in the Everglades. It's a campground and an uh, airboat boat ramp. And today we're actually going to be doing the Everglades Loop Road, which is about 20 mile gravel road. It goes right through the Everglades off 41 and it's a good chance to see all kinds of wildlife, a lot of alligators. Um, if you time it just right, if you're either like the first person in the morning or maybe someone hasn't traveled on it in a few hours, it's a good spot to check for snakes that are like sunbathing in the road. Um, we've had a lot of rain lately, so a lot of the road's going to be underwater, so we're not going to, we're not really sure what condition the road's actually going to be in, but um, we should be able to do it since we have Jillian's Forerunner today, but these are some of the campsites behind me at Mitchell's Landing. Um, it's really well taken care of in the middle of nowhere. Um, like I said, it's probably a good place to come, primitive camp. So we're going to load Goose up, and we're going to hit the trail. On Everglades Loop Road, every few hundred yards, there's a culvert that goes underneath the road, just like this one. It's a good spot to stop, look for wildlife, look for gators, fish, turtles, snakes, stuff like that, sunbathing. And uh, we've had so much rain lately that there's a lot of water coming through here. The volume of water going through here is just crazy. We've had so much rain from different hurricanes and tropical storms. But this is how clear the water all over the state of Florida should be without humans polluting it. There's another fish right there. But just all these old cypress trees, air plants. If you come out here at the right time, all these air plants are blooming. It just looks amazing. miles to 41 so we're about halfway now And it's gone. <laughs> if you're wondering about the heavy breathing in every video clip, it's goose. So far, we've seen a lot of fish. We've seen a few birds, especially that one that was trying to knock the fish out and swallow it. We saw one alligator, which is kind of surprising, but I think it's kind of late in the day. We're not in like the full sun, so they're not out trying to get um, warm and stuff like that. We saw two snakes, but they're kind of quick to go across the road. If you come like during the winter time or like first thing in the morning, they're usually laying out in the road and they're not moving very much. So you can walk up to them, pick them up if that's your thing or just uh, take a picture of them. But today they're just kind of scoot across the road. So it's kind of hard to whip out the camera and get out of the truck. Usually by the time you park the truck and get out of it, they're already across the road. You're never gonna believe how big this caterpillar is. It's probably the biggest caterpillar I've seen in my life. I guess it wouldn't be a Florida afternoon without a little rain. There's 
just a wall of rain up there coming our way. He's probably just waiting for a uh, fish to swim by his mouth so he can just chomp it right out of the water. Let's see if he's going to get a catfish. What do you think, Goose? You approve of the Everglades Loop Road? So we made it to the end of the 20 mile Everglades Loop Trail or road and what's behind me is what's left of the Monroe Station. So where all this traffic and everything is right here, that's US 41. Goes across the state if you guys aren't familiar with that. Anyway, back in the 30s, they used to have rest areas. And this particular rest area that's uh, the remnants are behind me was called the Monroe Station. Um, about five or eight years ago, I went motorcycle camping through the Everglades and I stopped right here and the building was still standing. Old wood building, two or three stories tall. It was kind of like a little roadside uh, gas station, service center, um, general store, and a little like motel all in one. It's really cool. If you guys Google it, there's old pictures and stuff like that. Anyway, I went inside of it, made a little YouTube video and everything like that. But I would say like five or six years ago, some kids came out here and took pictures of it and they ended up lighting it on fire and it burnt to the ground. So unfortunately, the very last rest area from like the 30s um, is no longer here. So that's all that's left of it right now. So we're going to be back on 41. We're actually going to go a few miles down the road. We're going to go west and we're going to stop at like the world's smallest post office. So we'll uh, show you guys the world's smallest post office, see if they have any postcards, and then we'll probably end the video there. Unfortunately, it's raining, but there it is. It's a small post office and yes, someone does work in there. If it wasn't raining, we'd probably go in there and try to get a postcard or something.